I've made. Well, uh, you know, th that's very important. Communication is very important. You can't just pick up the phone, it takes you two minutes, less than two minutes to but, say, but, but you know what? I, no, I, I, I don't go out and fool around with women, if, okay? I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm at work. I do not fool around with women. Well, I do not have a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm did I around. ask you those questions? Now it's making me think. Did I ask you well, those no, questions? No, no, no. You know that if I come from late, that means I'm working. You don't believe okay, me, well, you can I'll drop me a check. I'll tell you what, I'll call you and make sure you're at work before you leave. No, no, don't call me because I'm well, busy. Well, why can't I call you? I'm just too late. No, this busy excuse, now I'm beginning to wonder what's really happening. This busy excuse is nonsense. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You hear that says, I'm not talking to you anymore. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> thank you. Now, do you find me? You, you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> but better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, 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 that no rehearsal there, right? No rehearsal. Yeah. I, just, I just grab her and put her in the front. Here. It's dangerous in the front. Oh, here. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, what the problem here? What the problem with this fight, you know? What a problem, you you play psychologist, okay? Now, Josh, you, know, you want to be a psychologist, right? What a problem here is just, just, just I think fight. so there's a mis uh, communication that uh, you don't people don't know each other's other person's situation. Well, I think we married we married for thirty years, right? Thirty years? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, of course I know her, right? Thirty years. I've been married for thirty years. What a problem. What you guys care about is different. Huh? Like, you, you, and you're both trying to please each other. Like, you're, you're trying to please her by working. And you think working is the way to... Well, I'm busy. I'm busy, okay? Yeah. I got to provide well with my family, right? I work hard. I did the top world, right? Anybody else? Uh, in fact, Shimon, uh, do you have any comment? <laughs> I didn't see enough of it. I just saw her yelling at you. Oh. <laughs> so I just thought she was right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll tell you what it is. I'm not important enough for you to make the call to me to tell me you're going to be late. You're so busy. I'm just not important enough for you to pick up the phone and say, I'll be, I'll be half an hour late. Okay. But then we're done. Is it a mistake? To me, we're done. That means you don't trust me, right? No. I think what happened is that one, because you were married for so long, you took each other for granted. Other things That's are more huge. important yeah. than, yeah. than your best buddy and your partner. And, and, and she's correct, she's correct, okay? I might confess, I was wrong, she's right. But the problem can be easily resolved by phone call. Doesn't cost me any time, right? I mean, the way I react negatively is because he comes on strong, accusing me. That turned me off, alright? So I'm saying that, that this kind of fight can be easily resolved or avoided. I simply do what she suggested. Yes, honey, I'll be happy. And then she be happy. Alright. So now you know the, the another movie, the more chance movie. It's even more ridiculous. The husband come home and say, "Oh, I'm so tired." You know? And the wife say. Now you got to wash your feet before you go to bed. Well, can't you just go sleep? I'm too tired. <laughs> no, you got to wash your feet. If you don't wash your feet, you get out of my room. The wife said, Please, let me say I'm too tired. Don't bother, let me sleep. The wife said, No, man. If you don't wash your feet, you get out of the house. At this point, the husband is more than happy to jump up. Okay, okay. I'm living here. I'm living here for good. I can't take your nonsense anymore. Every day you don't pick on me, you don't pick a fight, you can't sleep. You only want to find something to fight, okay? Okay, I'm living here. I'm gone, gone for good. So the husband moved out. And she lost her husband over walking feet. <laughs> No, it's over accumulation of things. But still, I would, I would make sure the husband, that's what he, he, she was. 
So I said, I have enough of you, okay? You can be, you can be boss of the whole house, okay? You can boss the chair, you can boss the bed, you can boss. I'm out of here. I can't take it anymore. Enough. I am determined. That's it. You want, you want me to wash my feet, not to care about my knee? Forget it. The marriage is over. <laughs> the marriage is finished over one feet. So, so, more than people fight, but they have no, no perspective. I'll give you another scenario. Okay? Did the husband, uh, the husband and wife could fight? The husband said, this is no good thing. Okay? Now he's closing off the floor, and there's a pop bottle, chips all for the sofa. You're grounded. You're grounded for next week. And, and the, the kid with the mother said, Mother, that's crazy. That's crazy. But talk to him. So the wife comes to the sofa. Now, I, I think it's a bit too hard, you know what I mean? What a big deal. Um, he, he said, I want to clean up the mess. Why do you put him so harshly? The husband said, It's you. You swore the son. That's how you turn the child like that. Someone has to discipline the child. You want to become a man. You fight over, over, over how to discipline the son. One is punishment, too hard, too straight. The other one, too lenient, too soft. Find a fact. Eventually they say, well, forget it. I'm out of here. So the marriage finish over two different ways of disciplining the child. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you see, husband and wife fight like men, but over nothing. Because they don't know what really matters in marriage, what really matters in life. I mean, as a counselor, I'm going to tell you, you intelligent, well educated couples fighting over nothing, literally nothing. You can say, well, it's not possible, but it happens. You have all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. One way for myself that I find what really matters to me, and I help also, also friends and family, what, what would I like to look at in my uh, tombstone? In my tombstone or in my... Bible? In my tombstone, no, what would I like to be written? Gravestone. That's what I say. Okay, that's what really matters. The rest is extras. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, no, I mean, last, last time I also talked about what would you do that? What you want to write on your tombstone, right? That really capture the essence of your life. And why, why would that matter if you're, if you're dead? If you're dead no? Because well, I think that goes with me, and that's what that's difference I made in my life, in other people's lives, and I will uh, throughout my lifetime. But well, what you're your dead doesn't matter. I think it well, matters. But, but it, it, it doesn't matters. matter, but it, it, but how, how, how they live life How I live my life, yeah. Because that tombstone only a summary of his life. I, I guess that would be for, for the majority of people who believe in an afterlife. I suspect or probably the minority here. No, but, no, 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 no Okay, but who, who are you trying to communicate it to? Or, or rather, why is it important for you to communicate it to anybody? No, it's not about the communication, it's about what I did. Yeah, and he wanted to leave something for anybody to walk by and read and say, hey, you know, that's something, his legacy. He want, want yeah. to teach the next generation yeah, yeah, that other people, yeah. influence yeah. other people, make them, make, make them Just live old. that life, though, and show yeah. it in your actions yeah. as opposed to in the tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. Show it. Yeah. 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 Okay. And live it. And more important is to live it, but it would be nice to say, for example, no, no, I'm doing the next exercise. Uh, well. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now this is an answer. What do you really, really believe? In other words, what is the, your philosophy like? What is your guiding principle in, order, in terms of how you live your life, you know, uh, how you behave, how you make choices? So that, what you believe, mm -hmm. 
affect how you live, right? Mm -hmm. What you write in a tombstone is simply a summary of what you believe, how you live your life. Now, what is my book? And what we want to put on our tombstone, our, our survivors may not <laughs> end up doing it. <laughs> you put the, the, they may not believe that it's right. right. Well, but see, as a kid, I might be, I might be, I might be crazy. I love to go to seminary. Uh, Cemetery. Sorry, cemetery. cemetery. <laughs> now I used to study. <laughs> uh, I, I used to study at uh, St. Stephen Boys School in Stanley, Hong Kong. Anybody knows that? Yeah. Now St. Stephen Boys School and College is near the cemetery. You know, many people were buried there. I swear, many people were killed by Japanese on the beach and then buried, buried. There. So I used to like to visit the cemetery and look at tombstone. In fact, my first poem that I ever published is on um, meditation on, on a cemetery. So, reading what I've written on a cemetery and a tombstone can be very inspirational and very inspirational. Now, here is something. Now, before you die, you, you've got to have some guiding principles coming into your life. Okay. Now, this is an interesting book. Well, this, I believe, that there has been a radio program going on since the 50s. And uh, now this book, you know, like for example, what does Bill Gates believe? Make money. Huh? Make money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. He said, what do you believe? He said, I believe in unleashing your creativity. Okay. That's, it. That's why he dropped off from Harvard. He went to, you know, create something. Create something, you know, that's it. unleash creativity. The curriculum of school is too restricted. For the same reason, Steve Jobs dropped out of college. He never created that, right? Now, what if you are judge, what do you believe? A judge. Now, now, a judge would say, I believe in the rule of law. Now, if you are a revolutionary or a freedom fighter like Nelson Mandela, so what do you believe? What do you believe? I believe in freedom. Without freedom, people cannot determine their own future, cannot pursue their own dreams. Right? I believe in freedom. And there are all kinds of interesting things. Uh, it's not just uh, yesterday I asked Josh, he said, what do you believe? I said, now don't you give me a sensical answer. <coughs> a, a sensical answer said, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. <laughs> But that doesn't mean anything. Uh, tell me how do you live your life? What do you believe that guides you how you live your life? The Apostle Paul said, for me, for me to live is Christ. What he say, I believe in Christ, salvation to Christ, he actually demonstrated with his own life, right? He go everywhere, preach the gospel, he was stoned, he was jailed, he died for preaching the gospel. That's why I say, what you believe is not a dogma, or it's not a, a, a doctrine, or what, but the, you believe that really affects how you live your daily life. Now, that way, now I'm the pick on her now, we just sit here. Now, I know Jessica is shy, okay? Tell me clearly and loudly, what do you believe? What do you believe? Um. I believe that uh, people are, are valuable and uh, uniquely gifted and have unique things to contribute and, and need to be helped to become the best version or the most liberated version of themselves. So you, you believe in simple sentence? <laughs> you, mean you, be, you believe in the dignity and goodness and potential of each individual. Yeah. You believe in the dignity and worth and the value of the individual. Yeah. Something like that, right? So that means you better love me, care for me, right? <laughs> and respect me. Everybody's valuable, right? <laughs> um, so whatever you believe, it has to manifest itself. You, know, you ask me what I believe in. I believe in helping people and fighting injustice. You know why? I, I want to help people psychologically through the Bible, through psychology, but there are limits to what I can do to help people. 
Uh, Carl Rogers come to same conclusion. Carl Rogers is the one who invented person-centered counseling. He said, well, I can counsel hundreds and thousands of people, but if society, if the government is corrupt, you know, oppressive, yeah, that was something I can do to help individuals. So therefore, I have to fight injustice everywhere, right? If society is unfair, if the government is oppressive, yeah, you know, counsel individual, it all not do that, that much work. So that's why I'm I help individual and also fight injustice. Everywhere, everywhere, okay? Yeah? So that's somewhere my my life. So to know what really matters is to know what you really believe. You follow me? Now next time. Now What really matters, what you believe, is really related to your basic value orientation. Your value orientation tells, means what is most valuable to you. I mean, the basic value orientation. What most valuable? Uh, this is three common value orientation. The first one is pleasure. The, pre the pleasure principle, the pleasurable life, the happy life, the pleasant life. The second one is the success orientation. The third one, mean orientation. Now I'll explain to you the differences, okay? Uh, here's a famous rat. Do you know what it's about? Uh, you know what the rat doing there? Anybody notice the rat? What's this rat doing? It's getting cheese. Anybody say psychology? Oh, Skinner Box. Yeah. Skinner Box, but they're doing what here? They're doing what? Uh, stimulus, uh, stimulus response. Yeah, you know what I mean? But he, stimulus what? what? What's the rat doing there? Anybody say psychology? Yeah. Okay, you say anybody say? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 What's the question? This rat, what's the rat doing there? Getting pleasure. Huh? Getting pleasure. Now what is reward? What the most what is the most powerful reward for, for a rat? Food. Nah. Survival? Nah. No. Pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure, my friend. Pleasure pain. Here's a rat. He got electro planted in the brain in what I call the brain reward system or of brain reward pleasure center. Now, and there's a, there's a connected with that brain center is the uh, neurotransmitter. Yeah. And this rat is pressing the bar to stimulate the brain, you have to increase the level of dopamine. And, you know, so the higher dopamine, the more ha happy you are. Yeah. This rat will not to starve himself with that. Give a choice of food and pleasure. The rat choose pleasure. <clears throat> and he will press, press, press until he drop that. Is that what happened in the experiment? Oh, yeah. Oh. He, he go pressure, press, press the bar, the stupid brain, get high. I'm so happy. That's a good way to go. That's a good way to go. That's a good way to go. So you're believing in a pleasure already. <laughs> <laughs> but like the love bombs. <laughs> Do you know that people love chocolate? Yes. The chocolate also <laughs> releases <laughs> dopamine. Yes, it is. Sex does the same thing. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our praise. Reward, and the reward system, and the called reinforcement system, the brain is, is structured there and pathways. So we all know the mechanism, like being hugged or what, being, being in love, eating chocolate, okay, hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, or getting drunk, taking uh, cocaine. They all have the same effect. They all activate. The brain reinforcement system or the pressure center. Mm -hmm. So, like you, you can see the see the problem there. 
if maximize happiness, if you to if to live a happy life, then you will be like a rat. If it's self destructive, if you will you do everything to stimulate, see? The addiction means that you need gradually you need more and more dosage or work to get the same level of happiness. Right? You have to work harder and harder, not not even more. You need more sex, more chocolate, more effort, effort. Yes. I have a question there. You said you do the same or more and more uh, to get the same level of yeah, happiness. Yeah. But I think it's more the I would say this to get the same level of pleasure, not happiness. I don't think pleasure is necessarily happiness. But, but, but here people define happiness in terms of pleasure, which is narrow narrow way. Okay? Uh, most people say, Oh, I can never regain the pleasure of the first kiss, the first sexual experience, or the first the first drop. Um, the first experience seems to be tough. You know, after that, I'll be done here. And you have to work very, very hard you know, to, get, <laughs> to, to get up to the same level. I said, that, that's why it, it, if you live for pleasure, you're all but doomed to self destruction. <laughs> because it's an addiction phenomenon, right? You, you take more and more just to achieve the first experience, achieve the same level. So, so the pleasure principle, that, now Freud, the first one, who, who will talk about the pleasure principle. Now this pleasure principle is mainly based on animal, animal instinct, okay? When get older, he wrote another book called Beyond the Pleasure Principle. So life is beyond the pleasure principle. You have a question? Yeah, actually, um I don't know if I totally agree, because what you're suggesting is that people who may get pleasure from having a dopamine or whatever by taking, let's say, recreational drugs, uh, you're suggesting that anybody who takes it to get high, that over time they have to take more and more uh, of that stimulant to be happy. Uh, I would tend to disagree with you. I would imagine that there are a lot of people who are able to, let's say, take recreational drugs maybe once a week for 20, 30 years, and they don't need increasingly more just to give them the same type of pleasure. What? You're talking about, yeah, they are good at that. These are the exceptions. All the, but it's not my opinion. All the risk of addiction, all the risk of, I'm my one expert on yeah, addiction. Yeah, addiction is like yeah. that, right? Addiction, you always... Drug you, addicts you know, and alcoholics and whatever? Yeah, but, like people who recre use drugs recreational, and, and you know, there are millions and millions of people who do, not all of them mm -hmm. have problems. There are all kinds of social drinkers, not all have problems. I'm saying that. People so people gamble. Uh, mm -hmm. Not everybody is a problem no, gambler. No, no. Mm -hmm. There are people, they are social gamblers, social yeah. drinkers, so on. Yeah. They are the exceptions, okay? Mm -hmm. exactly. There are people who are genetically predisposed. There are people who are genetically predisposed. And there are people due to pressure in life, you see, escape. They take more and more. By definition, addiction means that you have to take more and more in order to reach the same level of pleasure. That is scientific definition of addiction. That doesn't depend on your personality. That's, of course, I say it depends on yeah. the The definition of addiction, if you're addicted, you're not addicted to your problem. Okay? Yeah. If you're yeah. addicted, then you take more and more drug, more and more effort to get some left. Because isn't okay. an, an addiction, and, and for those of you that are um, educated in psychology and all that, isn't um, addictions kind of a, there's a part in our brain and I, the name of it's just escaped me, but some people really can't quit because there's something in the brain that, that they actually have, and, and I wish I could remember the name, but I heard this on a, on a, on a show, that they, no matter how hard they try to quit the addiction, they have that part missing in their brain. Is that? Okay, to see what happened, okay, you know, addiction, there are productive factors, there are other genetic factors. Some people are predisposed, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you have a choice in terms of whether you want to get addicted or not. You know what? 
that that he that simply talk about this person has self control, okay? Say so I don't want to get in how occasional drug use, okay? So you have self discipline, self regulation. Not everybody can do that. At that stage, you have a choice. But here's okay, the okay, big but. Once you get addicted, you become a disease. Once get addicted, once you get uh, addicted, even your brain chemistry change, your brain structure change. For example, because the drug, the drug stimulate dopamine uptake, it short change, it short change the regular mechanism to produce dopamine. Okay, well, well natural way to produce dopamine. But when you drug to to stimulate that. That, that part of the brain that is responsible for dopamine shrunk. I'm going to drug that. Shrunk. You know, dysfunctioning. So, therefore, you have to depend on this drug to keep up the level of happiness. Okay? Uh, if you don't, then you can withdraw symptoms. We, uh, we don't want to get too detailed. So, that time, you need professional help. Okay? But here I'm saying that if you choose pleasure orientation, I'll give you an example later. If you choose pleasure as the ultimate aim in life, you are going to have problem of potential problem of addiction or self destruction. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have another example for you. Okay. Uh, next slide. Now, if you choose success orientation, there are also a problem there. Why might be some of the problem? Choose success as your ultimate life goal. I want to be a, a, a magnitude preacher, success. I want to be the richest man in Canada. I want to be whatever. Success. Now, what are the problem here? That the magic gets to the top. Yeah, no doubt about that. If you are single mindedly mm -hmm. committed to pursuing success, you are more likely to succeed more than your family. But what, what are the problem here? Don't come home in time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Why you pursue success? You no time for your dear wife. You hear that, Michael? <laughs> your dear wife, your dear children. You know, you know what nine eleven, nine eleven does to people. I mean, some people occupy the corner office on the highest floor, have a great view of New York. I could have died. I could have perished in a trick of eye. And now, that woke them up. They said, oh, I better change my priority. My dear wife and children are more important than climbing the corporate ladder. Right? They're more important than corporate ladder. So this one thing, oh, not a problem. Come on. Yes. You have to satisfy. I think you want to make a million, then you want to make more. Yeah, there's no end to it, right? Yeah. There's no end to it. Eventually, get what? It's all empty. Alexander tried to conquer the world. Eventually, cry that there's nothing to, have to conquer anymore. So, so at the end, there's only a sense of emptiness and the illusion. And what else? But here, yeah, Josh, you have to pay your hand up. Oh, I was going to say the same. And the problem is what? And the problem is that you have to stab a lot of people in order to get to the top. Now, this one psychology finding is that do you know, my friend? Your boss might be a psychopath. Your boss might be a psychopath. <laughs> 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 Scary? Mm -hmm. Yes? Can it be a moral, um, can it be a moral uh, success orientation? A kind of uh, in the middle, like, yes, I am success oriented, but I do it in a moral way. Oh, good, good, good. I'll come back to your point. Balance right? way? Good, thank you. I'll come back to your point. You know, you know what? There's another reason to come out. People at the top, you know, see, I'm not a psychopath, you know why? I'm not a top, I'm a little, little operation. 
you know, people at the top usually are psychopaths. Mm -hmm. You know why? It, uh, let me describe the psychopaths here. So, a sociopath, a psychopath, is someone who are charming, mm -hmm. who are charming, who know how to manipulate, who knows how to make friends and win influence, who know how to use power to get higher, get promoted, by a lot of people. But then what learn to harden their heart. Harden their hearts. God did not harden their heart. They have their own hearts. You pursue our success. What's the difference between a sociopath and a psychopath? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. They're the same? same? Psychopath, sociopath means that they have no empathy. I mean, one characteristic, one characteristic of a psychopath, sociopath, is that they have no empathy for other people. They, 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 they don't feel enough. They use everybody. That's a sociopath? Sociopath and psychopath, yes. They use everybody to, 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 mm. to succeed. They step on everybody. The young people that spit them out. I mean, I don't see all the big leaders are, are saying, but many of them are. Mm -hmm. They're hard to get to the top. Mm -hmm. They're power hungry, right? And oh, and that problem is that while you get to the top, then you worry that somebody doesn't put you down, mm -hmm. right? So you're paranoid. If you see anybody smarter than you are, you make sure you destroy them before they succeed. You, you, you watch it out, right? Anybody pose a threat, even though that person might be very important for the ministry, very important for the world, you make sure that the person doesn't succeed. You're squashing. Probably a lot of our political yeah. people. Yeah. That, oh, yeah, that, that whole sad story. That's why mm -hmm. your people are, are driven by success, they'll make a mess of the organization. Yeah, I mean, you see that in the office anyway, on an everyday basis, political, I mean, that's what happened. it's happening to me in the, in the office, I see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she saw that too, in the government office. Mm -hmm. And I saw that in Christian organization. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Yeah. Doesn't that depend on the values of the individual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. we'll come back to that, okay? That's why, huge. There was success value. You success it, you, you pick the value. Yeah, yeah. It's like, for example, uh, like uh, Warren Buffett. You don't hear about him uh, being vicious and ruthless, yeah, know, uh, but maybe some might question uh, what some of the top people in the Catholic Church have done. Yeah. Not the Catholic part too, right? So you know, right? I do value. There was success at basic value, at only value. It doesn't work. It's not sufficient. Okay? Happiness at only value. It's not sufficient. That's my point. Eh? Now, next one. Ha ha. Anybody read the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> this book will be translated to Chinese and Japanese. This is a famous book, The Tragedy of <coughs> Dr. Faustus. Or Faustus. Faustus. Huh? Faustus. 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 The German word. How to pronounce this word? Faustus. 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 Yeah. Faustus. Anybody read the story? No. No, no. Here, here is. Here is a story that captures the essence of what I'm trying to say. If, you are, if, if happiness is your basic orientation, if success is your basic orientation, you will be ready to make a deal with the devil. Let me tell you how. I come to that story, Dr. Foster. Faustus. Foster. Uh, Dr. Foster is well known, successful, and happy, but he had a problem. In spite of his success and pleasure enjoying life, he is still dissatisfied, bored. He look in the mirror and see himself getting older. Right? Look at the mirror test, right? You know, so he, said, so he decided to call the devil, to make a deal with the devil. The devil representative promised him this. Okay? I will give you my magic power to enjoy and doubt yourself in all the knowledge in the world, in all the pleasures in the world. 
for X number of years. The original term is 24 years. A million young people say 50 years. You know, but during that 50 years, you always look young and handsome. Okay, young and handsome. And whatever you do will be hugely successful. And all the women will be crazy about you. You can have as much sex as you want. You can sleep with any beautiful woman you want. You have many power to work at, you have many power, eh? <laughs> there the are many people, you know, why do many top people end up in jail? Because they make a deal with the devil, right? Guess what? But at the end of 50 years, I will claim your soul. And you will be condemned to hell for all eternity. Father said, oh, I don't care about, I don't believe in God or hell, heaven or hell. I just want to enjoy it for three years. I'm going to deal with you. And, uh, and uh, then the, 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 the Bible works, same thing. What a perfect man to gain the whole world by losing his soul. Same question, right? What a perfect man, right? What a perfect him. So, I want for three years up. He looked at the mirror, it all crumbled and miserable. He will spend eternity in misery. So success and pleasure orientation does not work. Now I'll give you another example. Here. So King Solomon faced the same problem as Dr. Frost did. As Dr. Frost. He is wise, he is learner, he is king, he is rich, he is accomplished, he has everything, but he concludes that meaningless, life is meaningless. Same, 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 the same feeling as other frog. Um, he is successful, he has everything, but he feels life is boring, life is meaningless. I mean, he still feels the same feeling, but he keeps a different conclusion. What way I'm Fear God and keep command. Now, why is it make a deal with the devil? Here, make a deal with God. I mean, they start the same problem, right? And up with different, different solutions. This is another thing. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to fear God, keep commandment? But this is, the, this is the human ability as a human being. That's the whole duty of man, right? If you do your duty, Care of responsibility, you'll be happy, right? Yeah? Now, here. Here, say. Here, here Solomon said, the meaning of life is to find out all your gifts, and the purpose of life is to give it away, okay? Now, what does that mean? Solomon says, now, life is a gift, right? Life is a gift. Because before you're not there, before you're born, you didn't exist, right? But once you come to this earth, you're blessed with life, blessed with parents who take care of you. So, so life itself is a gift. If life itself is a gift, you are responsible to value this life, to nurture this life to protect his life and to develop that life, right? That's, that's, that's logical, right? Also, you not only give life as a gift, but you're also giving certain gifts. Okay? In the Bible, the gift, you know, gift called charismatic, is a gift. You're giving some gifts and strength to do what? To serve God and serve people. So, so that, that's a key, okay? That's the key. You will see the orientation change now. The success and happiness of orientation is a, what is in for me, okay? How can I maximize my success and happiness? See, the orientation in me. Now, when you switch to the mini orientation, you see, well, the question is that, how can I fulfill my responsibility that life demands of me, that God demands of me? How can I use my gifts 
to serve. See, that, that's a completely different orientation. So the meaning value come to a different conclusion, different answer to the same question. Oh, life is so boring, life is so meaningless. How I get the most out of life? Most of the same question, but come to different conclusions, depend on your value of attention. Right? If value is success, personal success and happiness, you end up looking more likely to be tempted to make a deal with the devil. If you, your orientation has always, what's most meaningful, what's meaningful, what's most virtuous, you end up making a deal with God, you surrender yourself to God, surrender yourself to high, high purpose. Yes. But even the idea is, is still, you know, if, if, I, if I look at pleasure and happiness and use them as the same, just for argument's sake, pleasure and happiness being the same, even the idealist, he's still looking for something to make him happier. It's just we all have different things in life. Okay. With, with this, the life is so diverse. Yeah. I mean, not everybody believes in a higher benevolent power, but there's still very worthy, high-minded, when I say high-minded, have very strong values without needing to be religious. There are people like that, and I think particularly more so in today's society where science has become, and technology has come to the forefront so much, and people look at the world and say, if there's a God, how could that happen? So there are people, regardless of religion, who, uh, yeah. and I think that's inherent in man. I don't think you need a religion. Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, is yeah, correct, you're correct. And I think, you know, all those examples, um, you make a deal with the devil, you make a deal with God, you, the idealist. It's, it, I think to me the end result is we're all looking for happiness, no matter what you do in life. You're doing it in order to feel better. So it doesn't matter, any of those things, because life is so diverse. Uh, I want to say something about uh, happiness and success. It may, you know, you, you success, but you may not be happy. Give example, you know, those famous and uh, rich people, mm -hmm. uh, Winnie Houston, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley. They all, one of the reasons they died. Yeah, but, uh, right. but what I'm saying is everybody, we're all doing something, whatever we do, you know, it is in order to feel better. Let's, let's use the word feel better instead of happiness or pleasure. So we're all doing something in order to feel better, whatever state we're at. And I think there's nothing wrong whether it's... Let me give you a, a more complete picture, okay? Okay. Do you know why God gave us the pressure center and and punishment center? See? Pleasure and... And pain. Pain. Pleasure <laughs> center and pressure center. You see? You be evolution is the same thing, okay? That that the pressure center is important for survival, survival of individual and species. Because if you if you if sexual intercourse painful, then nobody will have baby anymore, right? So that the species die, right? So it had to be pleasurable, right? So people are engaging that. And the, the, the reward center is the anything like a hug. Uh, you know, a success, being, being praised by someone, uh, they all contribute to the reward center, the, the reward pathway. So, Solomon asked the question, how can I be happy, right? And it's also happiness, but the key difference. Franco will say, the primary, primary orientation, primary duty, is serving a high purpose, okay? And happiness comes to the back door. Now, if you make happiness the ultimate, the most important thing, then happiness not only elude you, but happiness lead you to the door of the devil. So the key reason, we're only happy now, but, but on, on the largest scheme of things, you cannot make pursue happiness the number one. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I don't want to use the word happiness there. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't use different words. I want to use a different word. But in talking about the pleasure pain, um, it's a biological. Uh. That's biological. So, 
I mean, the brain, I think, naturally goes towards something that will reward you. Yeah. So, pleasure, happiness, whatever words you want to use. It's it's important. It's important. Yeah. yeah, but so, and I think, I know for myself, in my personal experience, when I'm happier, I'm a better person, I'm more relaxed, and I'm able to respond in the moment more than, and, you know, I'm clearer, I'm a clearer thinker when I'm happy. Um, happiness is important, but you know, it's, it's the definition of happiness, feeling better, pleasure, knowing that it's a biological feedback thing, that you're on the right track when you're feeling happy. But it's, I'm trying to get clear on the idealism and happiness. It's the feeling better, knowing, and I do agree with that, the, that statement of that. But it's different for different people because the, the world is so diverse. And yet it comes, to this, it comes to intention, it comes to feeling better but doing it in a way which is ethical. Okay. And it's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it if it's ethical. I mean, meditation, you could be addicted to meditation, yeah. and as long as it's not addiction to an external which affects your chemical structure. Yeah. Yeah. I call it more, the, the word I use is life-enhancing. Also, Dr. Well, a famous religious person, anyways, he talks about um, the value world. My values, right? It can be different from yours. They're not necessarily bad. It's just different from yours, and that's what makes my world. Okay. Gives my world meaning. So, so let, let let me incorporate what they say. Okay. It's true that people are doing value, people are doing strength, people are life is like, but all of all, life lessons. Okay, not lessons. Lesson number one, you know who you are, right? Lesson number two, you need to know what really matters. Okay. What really matters might differ from your people, but your answer to what really matters in different situations is related to your value orientation. Absolutely. Like for example, let, 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 me, let, let me start now. Yeah. How, who, who is desperate for a job? Am I looking for a job? Now suppose you're, you're desperate looking for a job. Now I ask you, Will you take any job? Will you take any job? The desperate for a job. Will you, will you take any job? I was desperate for a job too. Easy. You got any job? Yeah, I would. I would have taken any job. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap, 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 snap. <laughs> now, one of my assistants, also from Tyndale, he said, "You know what? You are really, you are really desperate." I don't mind to be a male prostitute. You're not that desperate. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you told me you were taking any job. Do you want do Do you want to be a, a male prostitute? No, but that violates. Oh, no, oh, oh, why not? See, it violates because, my values. Okay, that that that, that put my point, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but that that my mom came there said he would he wouldn't be prostitute. He make too many. A woman like him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean you, are, you, you are different, you say no. I don't go so far because being a positive violates my personal value system, compromise my integrity, and dishonor like God, right? It's, it's, right? Yeah. So, so, not anything, right? So that, that he has some values. If, if money is everything, then <coughs> you can energy or pay as well. Value is morals. Okay, we come back to that, okay? Uh, yeah. So, so, so it, it doesn't matter what you believe, uh, you know, God, you know, Buddha. The basic idea is that meaning has to take you, the key word to meaning, uh, the big word called self transcendence. I mean, you have to transcend yourself into the self. It it's possess some idea, okay? That's the key. That's scientific proof. It's not my, my, my opinion. All the scientific research saying that you want to be really happy, you, you will feel fully satisfied, you want to have authentic happiness, you have to produce some ideal that's bigger than yourself. Uh, that is the conclusion of hundreds of studies. That's about yeah. ne next slide, okay? Well, well, well. Now, come to conclusion. 
How to evaluate? How to evaluate the different value? What values are good for you? What values are bad for you? Okay? I propose five tests. The first test is perspective test. A perspective is a vintage point. It's a, it's a point of view. Okay? Now, the Chinese say that, oh, don't be like a frog at the bottom of a well. It's hard to say, Nenji, a frog at the bottom of a well in Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. You sit at the bottom of the well, you look up, your sky is so right? So if you, if your perspective of looking at life yourself, so, you're like a frog at the bottom of the well. Everything about me, me, me. Then your world is very narrow. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the thing that I'm saying is that, Tui Bu, Hai Kuo, Hai Kuo Tian Kong, the Chinese saying, the uh, wisdom of Chinese saying. Tui right? Bu, Hai Kuo Tian Kong. I mean, you step back and look up. The sky open up. The ocean open, open up. So you have a much broader view. So therefore, when you look at life, you can take a broad perspective, right? A big perspective, not just me, 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 like a little frog at the bottom of a well, but like a bird flying in the sky. Take, take a broader view, a bigger perspective. So the key is that if your value is all about you, and your happiness, is like that, or your, your value is go beyond your self-interest, broader perspective. The second test, now many people mention about value, uh, 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 this is a uh, core value, okay? Okay, the bottom line test. 